this stuff lights your fireman, the pilot lights out. This football team is coming into our place. We're standing in our way. This is a game of the heart. Focus and finish. Uh, sorry about that. Hey, the first thing we need to discuss here is how the scientific rock, paper, scissors decision method affects fantasy football. Actually, we really need to decide how rock, paper, scissors decides anything. Take a look at this and you'll see what I mean. Why do people play rock, paper, scissors? It's a stupid, stupid game. It does not work. The logic is really not right. If you are a rock and you are fighting scissors, I understand it. Rock, you're winning. Scissor, good luck. You know, you, <coughs> you can now not cut other things because rock has crushed you good. If you are scissor, and paper coming round the corner and looking at a looking at a nice street sign or what? <laughs> bye bye. You know you are now origami swan or something. Good job, scissor. But if you are paper and you see some rock, okay? Yeah. You do this. What, what is this? Like a hat. You know. This does not hurt a rock. This helps a rock, okay? Rock now does not have sunburns. Rock can have bad hair day. And paper has help out. This is a positive relation. This is like the birds on the elephant back. Who are eating all of the poop away from elephant back symbiotic here okay so no more with this this is stupid change not rock paper scissor rock paper dynamite right if I'm rock and here come dynamite guess who win this one yeah not rock rock becomes sand Alright, now stay with me, because we're going to come back to that. One of the things that really stood out to me from last night's game was how hard it's going to be to gain fantasy production from the Denver running backs going forward. It's not that there's no value there. If you had no Sean Marino in week two, you were tickled orange. He racked up 22 fantasy points in standard leagues. That's good for second best for all running backs behind Marshawn Lynch. But the way the Broncos use their three backs, basically giving them one drive at a time, it's not fantasy friendly. Last night Marino had 12 carries for 39 yards, Ball had 11 for 61, and Hillman had 9 for 66 with both Marino and Hillman each having one catch out of the backfield. But when it came time to punch the ball into the end zone from the one yard line in the fourth quarter, the three backs played, you guessed it, rock, paper, scissors to decide who got to go into the game and run the ball in for the score. So if you were in a dogfight late last night and needed a TD for a win, depending on who you had, rock, paper, scissors decided it. For the record, in case it helps you going forward, Hillman chose rock. Ball and Marino went with scissors. Steelers rookie Le'Veon Bell is expected to play this week after missing the first three weeks with a foot injury. I don't know that he's a feature back this week as he'll probably need to work his way into things, but I do expect him to get the most touches. Going forward, Bell will be the guy to run with in the Steel City. Belial Powell gets a fantasy boost this week as he'll be in every down back on Sunday not having to share time with Chris Ivory. Ivory's dealing with a hamstring pull and is expected to be out for at least two weeks, if not more. Now, sharing time, Powell had been averaging over 10 fantasy points per week in standard leagues and more in PPR. And because he plays for an offense that doesn't have a lot of fantasy appeal, you may find him to be a sneaky ad. Last week, his 149 yards rushing was the third most in the league. Keep an eye on the Ray Rice situation. At the moment, it doesn't look good for his return in week four, but whether it's him or Bernard Pierce getting the bulk of the action back there, 
you're going to want to play whoever it is against the Bills' 31st ranked run defense. Blaine Gabbert will return as the Jaguars' starting quarterback against the Colts this week, so there's that. And hey, the Vegas houses think it's a big deal. Last week, Jacksonville was a 19-point underdog against Seattle. This week, with Gabbert in there, they're only getting 9 at home. You may want to consider adding John Baldwin this week. He's been a healthy scratch each of the first three weeks, but the San Francisco receivers have been struggling to get open, and with Vernon Davis either out or hobbling battling a hamstring pull, look for Baldwin to get some love in the passing game Thursday. Maurice Jones' Drew owners have to be disappointed with his fantasy production so far, but hey, perhaps there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It appears as if the Jags are scrapping their zone blocking scheme and will go back to the more conventional power gap running that Jones has been so successful with in the past. Now, if someone was frustrated and let him loose, I might be tempted to try and pick him up. Today's Twitter question comes from at BigBlue14 who writes, What do I make of what's going on with David Wilson? He had just one fantasy point last week, and I was expecting a bigger year. Well, hey look, he had 25 carries. I know it was just 75 yards last week, but he did have a 17-yard scamper for a touchdown callback. So you throw that in there, and you're probably looking at him a bit differently. The bigger thing for me is that he's still not adequate in pass protection, which means on passing downs for the most part, he can't be on the field. Consequently, his opportunity to catch the ball in space where he can really do some damage and get you points that way goes by the wayside. Last week, for instance, he only had one target. Now, I gotta believe they're working on him hard with this because after Cruz, he's the best big play guy they got with the ability to take it to the house anytime he touches the ball. So, I'd keep running him out there. I think he'll work out in the end. Hey, look, he hasn't fumbled in two weeks. Hey, if you have a question you want answered here on the show, hit me up with a tweet. And if I don't use your question, I'll tweet you back with my best advice. How about that? Be sure to tune in to the Roto Experts Fantasy Football News Notes and Analysis segment every weekday. I'll be here to keep you current and ahead of the competition. And on weekends, come back for This Week in Fantasy Football as I team up with the King, Scott Engel, covering the week that was and the week that will be, answering your viewer questions. For Roto Experts, I'm Mike Cardano. See you tomorrow, everyone.